accidentally just ended the episode. A friend said, uh, please give me a hug. And Grace said, soon, my darling. Soon. And where is Mr. Midnight? Your cat, well, you know, he ran away after what he did. What? He ran away? But what did he do? I should probably go on the other side, right? Well, your cat killed my sister and your father. He's a traitor. That's not true. It can't be true. He didn't do it. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. In the end, we must have someone to blame, right? But you can't blame Mr. Midnight. He's my best friend. But it's easier to blame somebody else than taking responsibility, isn't it? <sighs> oh, that could mean two things. That could possibly mean that we killed our parents, which was my first theory that I came up with. Or Grace killed our parents. I will always take responsibility for my actions, even if they're not so good. What a good girl. Rest now, my darling. You need it. But Aunt Grace, don't leave me. Why am I chained to the bed? Because your hands do bad things when they're untied. What are you talking about? Uncuff me now. I have to go find Mr. Midnight. Little, little shining friend, don't you worry about the lies. The seeker of the truth will always die because the evil will ever hide. Little, little shining friend, go to sleep and sleep tight. And forget the pain inside your mind. You were selected to suffer, to cry and hate. But the darkness wants to free you from all disgrace. Sleep tight, my darling Fran. Oh, the connotations! Don't leave me here, Aunt Grace. Come back, please. So, that could mean Grace is part of a cult and her parents were selected to be killed. Or, the seeker of the truth, again, this came up previously in the third chapter, if I remember right, where we, I, assumed, no one agreed with me on this, I assumed that our father was investigating the cult and the cult decided to take him out specifically. So I think that one of those two theories is definitely about to be polished off. Why is she always acting so strange? Why blame Mr. Midnight? Kitty couldn't have killed my parents. His claws are so tiny and soft. I hope he's okay, but what should I do now? Tick tock, tick tock. Crazy sound, it never stops. Now that I think about it, the clockmaker said that time is a layered reality. Maybe there's another version of me in this room, in another time. Or I'm just imagining things, but if it's true, how could I make contact with her? Dr. Dean said that everything is inside my head. Uh, this thing on the door right here as well could possibly be a false panel. And on the other side is the only door handle, which can only be locked from the outside, which is how we saw it just open. Alright. Let's look at ourselves. I don't want to lay on this bed ever again. I had better plans than waking up chained to it. Anyway, I'll find Kitty and move to a thirster. Alright, and these slippers? My slippers! I use them when it's raining and I can't go outside. Also, it's a weekend and I don't need to go to school. Anyway, I don't need them to rescue Mr. Midnight. So, right. Uh, we could possibly, potentially... Think about this, right? Maybe it can't be opened at all. That's not true, Fran. Come on. Come off it. Right, so that'll come in handy later, I imagine. There's a nutcracker. Stands on guard. Great. I think he's afraid of the ladies because sometimes he bites me for no reason at all. <laughs> okay, Mr. Midnight's bed. Oh, I can almost hear him purring. Mr. Midnight's bed, okay. And, <laughs> I painted this one. It's Kitty and me. Oh! And the wind took all the magical dust away. Oh, hello, what are you doing on my bed? Are you sick? That's Fran! Your bed? This is my bed, and no, I'm not sick. But you're chained up? Are you a dog? Wait, do I know you? I'm not a dog, and yes, I'm chained. Can you unlock it? Whoa, you're... myself! You really are! You think so? Then this means I managed to enter the ultra reality! Did you meet Edward already? He's always talking about that. Yeah, I met him already, but I haven't seen him since the crash. You crashed? That means you're broken! I'm not broken, why would you say that? Think about it. The only way to cross into the ultra reality is... to break the eyes, to break the ears, to break the physical limitations! That sounds extreme. You think I'm dead? No, not at all. They told me that to die is just a mental state. They? Who are they? All the creatures that we can see, the black ones, the white ones. Do you know why we can see these things? Yes. A man named Leon came to visit once and told me everything. Oh, can you tell me then why we see the things we do? What if I help you unlock the handcuffs first? Then we can talk. Good idea. I also need to find Mr. Midnight. I think he's in danger. 
Aunt Grace blames him for the death of our parents. Who's Mr. Midnight? What? That's our kitty. You know, our best friend. I don't have a cat. Guess that's the difference between us. Anyway, let me see if I can unlock your chain. It so happens that I'm a key collector. I'll be right back. Oh, we are also wearing oversized mother's gear, I imagine. A lot of soft toys here. This is my super cute rabbit. I like to make it cry. But only to make it laugh again. And then be mad at it. Okay. The big, big teddy that eats big, big monsters. Please talk. I know you can. No? You're a bad teddy. Did you like my show, Little Bear? I was the greatest dancer of them all. Thank you. You really think so? You're too upset. Would you like to talk? I know it's hard not having a leg. I can't find it, alright? It's not my fault. This shirt is angry with me. Why would it be angry with you? It didn't fit, so I said it was a dumb shirt. It's been lying on the floor ever since. Well, oh, fair enough. There's a pants. They can be used by creatures with two legs. Or as a hat for those with long ears. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to use them now. You can put them on the rabbit, I suppose. A scarf! That's not what I clicked. I'm pretty sure I didn't click on that closet. Did I click on that? No, I didn't. The blue scarf from Wintertime. What is it doing here? It's not winter. I'll pick it up some other time. Alright, Fran. Ah, oh, so many things. There's a picture here of Itward and Fran and Polontris and also two trees. I drew this after my journey with Itward and Polontris. I think Polontris is funny and smells like bubblegum. And Itward likes to play all day long. Okay. Straight jacket and the dress. That jacket. I always must put on that jacket to go outside. Called that as well straight in the first episode, I think. I can't even play then. It's quite useless. Okay, what about these? One blue blanket and one white. I don't need them right now. They're for when it's very cold. Okay, so we're in the lunatic asylum right now. Which is why she keeps calling it the asylum and not the hospital. Crayons to draw happy faces on everything. We can go to the other side again. Or to give colour to the ugly things. Or just to draw on paper. Can we just put the green one in here? No, we Lost and found. Ah. I don't feel like drawing right now. Maybe I could make a paper boat. But I can't. I'm on a mission. Let's concentrate. Some of my clothing to make shows. I like to dress differently for every show. It gives them more character. A box of keys. My key collection. I hope I can unlock the other friend now. I'm glad we have a kleptomania in common. There's also a doll. Did you do bad things? That's why you're grounded, little lady. You can't come out yet. No, no. I feel like that's projection right there. What is this? A little carousel, I think? Oh, sweet, sweet melody. One more time. La la la. It does the same as before. Ah. So this was in the first episode that we found as well. That was right next to our hospital bed. Looks like we've also got our own room. Maybe we are really messed up. Dr. Oswald. Okay, I think this might be the stand-in for Edward. I'm completely normal. Don't you see? I'm just a funny, clever girl. That's all. Ah, so maybe we haven't been lobotomized just yet. We can also leave, right? The door is closed, obviously. Okay, let's use the keys on the chains with Fran. Oh, God. Uh, this one looks right. <laughs> ah, it won't fit. Let's try another one. Uh, maybe this one? Aha! Unlocked. Right. Why was the key gold? But well, the shackles are silver. Thank you so much, Fran. <laughs> you really do have a lot of keys in there. Yes, don't you? Oh, Fran, before I forget, Elantris told me that if we meet someday, I should give this to you. Here, I think it'll help you open something. I'm sorry Mickey Mouse is the best voice I've got for Fran. I sue me. The little golden box was having a hard time. All of the screaming and the boogers were driving me mad. I press it by the ears, first twice to the left and once to the right. I rub its only eye two times to see if it has tears this time. I take him once by the left ear and scream, STOP WHINING, YOU LITTLE GOLDEN BOX! Press your eye again and open the door. Oh, uh, that's the box, right? Uh, screaming and the boogers were driving me mad. Okay, press it by the ears. Hello, Tris. You know him too? Oh, thank you. Yes, he also told me that if we met, you'd be ready for what's about to come up. What? Ready for what? Tell me. Oh, no, I can't now. She's coming. Be quiet. Nurse! Come on, Fran. You must see the doctor now. Did she stare at us before? No, don't go, little Fran. We have stuff to talk about. That nurse is a bad, bad nurse. She was the one lying to the newspaper about me. Oh, I see. Okay. 
Anyway, I must find... She was in cahoots! She's part of the conspiracy. Oswald actually did commit us to test that medication and butcher us and our friends as well. And nobody can take my kitty away from me. Nobody. Okay. Let's use this. Uh, where are the ears? Uh, here. No, that's not an ear. It's the only eye. So many buttons pressed! Uh, do we just use the note on it? It can't be done. Yes, it can! The answer is there, Fran, you idiot! Okay. So, what's this? This is Imaginex! Ah, so that's how we... God, that's how we knew about the flying ship that it was flying. Okay, and we're probably visualizing that this child is ours. I don't know what that acorn represents, but it's probably the pine cones. And the alien actually looks really similar to Itwood, doesn't it? Oh, I love this comic! I like the part where the alien takes the girl to another planet. It's always nice to see new places, like Thurster. Right. Okay, that's concerning. What about this train? Riding the choo-choo train is the best. Let me hop on the other side here. It sings all the time. Choo-choo! And then you crash and die. That's unhealthy. Okay, what about this doll right here? The big doll my daddy and I built together. Her name is P1, and she likes to be naked. <laughs> she had a dress once, but she burned it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> also, there's parallels uh, for this in the, uh, the other room in the mental asylum. So we could probably take this box right here. We certainly can. Balloons in many colors. Whoops. Okay, there's a painting. Oh, this is Alice from school. We like to play together. Damn it, it's not mother. That's <laughs> an Alice in Wonderland reference. She tells me stories about a wonderful land she visits sometimes. We have so much fun making stuff up together. Okay. I use this mirror to see my beautiful face. Also to comb my hair and see if the clothing fits. Sometimes I stare at my eyes for a very long time and get scared. It's not healthy. It's gone shell. I don't believe you can hear the ocean in a shell at all. I think it's just my ear making it up. Anyway, it's pretty and I like it. Actually, if you do hold those to your ears, it kind of resonates high frequencies against the uh, very, very hard interior of a shell. And it's also very smooth, so it doesn't dampen any of the sound. So what you're listening to is basically like all of the feedback and electrical signals in the room bouncing out of that shell. It's pretty cool, actually. There's a hat here. My summer hat. It doesn't fit anymore. My head is too big. My mother always told me that it's because I have a big brain. But I wonder, is that a good or a bad thing? Who knows? Probably one-fifth smaller now, <laughs> gotta be said. What are these, teeth? Lots of candy in the jar. <laughs> Lots of candy in the jar. Okay, it's not teeth. Is it? Ew, it has cat hair all over it. I won't lick it. Why not? All right. Ah! Ah! I'm taking the sock. My tiny sock for my tiny feet. I'll just leave it here. Okay. This doll. Hello. Don't look at me like that. We had a deal. You stay here until I grow up. Because grown-up people aren't afraid of dolls, I think. No, they most certainly are. I'll take my sleeping bag when I find Mr. Midnight. So we'll have somewhere to sleep in a Thurster. I hope Edward comes by to get me. I don't want to be here anymore. Oh, a Thurster's just the forest that she was freezing to death in, and hypothermia uh, very, very commonly shuts your brain down and forces you to experience hallucinations. Maybe we actually went out into the forest and that's we hallucinated a Thurster, and since we survived the hypothermia, we now have this, like, weird warped idea that a Thurster is actually out there, and it's not. Okay. Ah, oh, my school case. I may need it. Can we just open it now? Uh, examine. My school case. Can we examine this box? Not really. Oh! I clicked on something. It has so many buttons to press. Okay, I don't know what it means by... An one, one, two, poke the eye. Ah, we can open the puzzle box. Okay, let's read this again. So I rub its only eye two times. Right, no, that's not the start. I press it by the ears, first twice to the left and once to the right. I rub its only eye twice to see if it has tears this time. I, t I take him once by the left ear and scream, stop whining, you little golden box. Press your eye again and open the door. Right, so that actually gives us an order of operations. Uh, one, two, one, one, two, whoops. One, two... One, one, two, one, one. Oh my goodness, it opened! I am a master! Nice! Uh, okay, I found a key and... A manual? 
Mabuka, Mabuka, wake up mother, Mabuka, the horned child is playing with the light. The Velocas is angry and shining too bright. Mother Mabuka, wake up, wake up and give up the child. Before the darkness ends, in the hands of the light, Mabuka must wake up. Let's build the Ekog clock on the back of the giant cat. What the f***? Too strong are the bubbles and too bright the light, she cried. Me, Mabuka, the mother of darkness, will open my heart. Please take my little horned evil child and shut down the lights. So were we supposed to be sacrificed to this old cult? Because we were supposed to be evil, quote unquote, but our parents didn't want to give us up, so they were killed for it. Maybe. I think I must wake up Mabuka. Why would Polontris give me this? It must be important. I think I must build it. Besides, it's designed by Cogwin, the clockmaker. Oh, maybe Polontris is also the doctor who dealt with us when we had the hypothermia from the forest. All right, any other things? A couple of shoes. The shoes, they like to cover up my feet. This made me think of the great dancer in a thirster. I wonder if he'll dance again without the shoes. All right, friend, tap danced. That's good to know. My lovely peach dress for sunny days. Uh, what about the rest of them? What about this uh, very little misfortune looking dress? The coat for when it's windy and cold. The summer dress, it has a big button. Can we take it? What if we uh, use the knife on that button? Hey, nice. A big pink button from my summer dress. Thank you very much. I am hoarding things like crazy. Just a regular scarf, doing what regular scarves do. I'm happy with this. I think we're, I think we're done in the closet here. So what are we supposed to be doing? We could look at this picture on the wall. That's Fran with a juice box and two sandwiches and a lunch pail. She's got two shoes out. She isn't wearing any socks. This is a cat. Ah, I love this picture of Mr. Midnight. He looks so confused. Mummy and I ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that day. I think Mr. Midnight ate a bunch of insects. Okay, gross. Dollhouse! Uh, there's a stamp here. This one is Albert, and he likes relative things. Okay, Albert Einstein, joke. It's convenient to think that everything is relative. Especially if you don't have a straight answer. Uh, this is Tesla, and he likes to play with energy. I had a dream where he was made of thunder. He was Thunder Man, superhero. That's... I'm pretty sure... Isn't there a game called Tesla vs. Edison or something like that? I rescued the queen from my dad's playing cards. I was forced to cut her out her twin sister, though. The other queen is dead now. Well, long live the queen. There's a... A rock. And a pine cone. My mother drew this flower for me. I lied to my friend once, and I told her I drew it myself. But then I told her the truth, and she said it was okay. Good. I don't like to drink soda because my tummy gets mad. But a teacher made an instrument with lots of caps and added it to a stick. Then we formed a band called Shucks and School Shucks School and Sucks put together. Okay, there's a key behind this. Something back there. Yes, there is. Uh, right. Let's put that up there. I can feel the texture. What could it be? <laughs> I wonder. I really wonder. I can feel the texture. Uh, what if we just? I don't know what if this is there. Never mind. Okay, can we use it now? Yes! Okay, I bet it unlocks something. Okay, probably. Probably does. Oh. Right. This won't work. Okay. Well, I tried. I'm not seeing a hell of a lot of other stuff that we could steal from this dollhouse. I think we've got everything. So what's here on the shelf? Crayons, Lady Gnome, Teddy, Ballerina, yes! All in its place. Hmm, I like the sound of the music box. It reminds me of Edward, in a way. Right. That doll likes to read. A lot. I know, because I taught her. I bet she can tell the st all the stories in the books from memory. I should teach her how to talk too, so she can tell me the stories. Wait, didn't you teach her how to read? You should be able to tell the stories off by heart as well then. What is, what is this? My lovely kitty! Love these pictures! I promise I'll find you, if I have to do it all over again. I wonder where you are right now. Uh, we actually already know where the cat is, unfortunately. And there he goes! And it's nowhere good. What about this window? Ah! Excuse me, is somebody down there? Yes, I'm a somebody. Have you seen a black cat? No, I haven't seen a cat, but I do see a black thing eating from me. Eating from you? I think it's a Kamala. Are you alright? No, not really. I don't feel very well. I feel sad. Well, I may be able to help. I got rid of a Kamala once all by myself. Really? That sounds promising. I'd love to be happy again. 
I'll see what I can do. Don't worry. What about this one? Ah, Kamala. Nasty creatures. Or tree. You must be really sad with the Kamala eating from him. I know Kamalas don't like water. Right. Well, things have changed a little bit. The house looks so old and bloody. Yeah, you don't say. And we'll leave. Okay, so we probably can't go out. We probably have to use the knife to scrape open the wallpaper here. Because that makes the most sense. Nope. We just have to use the key. Nope. Oh, we actually got another key with a cat on the, uh, here. Let's use this on the cat. Aha! Of course! The light! Oh, are these all the chapters? There's an eye here, obviously. Hello? What a big eye. What are you looking at? Are you looking at my beautiful face? Do I know you? You seem familiar. I think this is Fran looking into the mirror at herself, right? Uh, let's try and poke her in the eye. It won't do. Ah, oh, well. Let's agree to disagree. Let's take this key. Nothing. All right, what about down here? Maybe? Sometimes things just don't work. There's another key right here as well. Okay, that one's got a giant triangle on it. We'll try this one here. Ah, we've opened 104. Great. There's not really anything else we can interact with. Uh, let's just go into 104 and see what happens. That is a severed eyeball with the cosmos spinning inside of it. What? There's a Nautilus shell right over my shoulder right here. A golden snail! Is somebody in there? Maybe the snail is asleep. Shh. Well, let's wake it up. Or not. Let's pull the curtain. Intruder! Infiltrator! Why would you enter without presenting yourself? Oh, I am Akula, the eye from the beyond. Behold my beauty! Oh, I'm sorry. What a big eye you are. You must see very well. I see everything. Nothing less! Everything? You see my cat? Your cat? How is it possible that you own a cat? Are you royal? A queen? A princess? No, I don't own him, but we have a relationship. We're friends. Friends! How lovely. But yes, I did see a cat earlier today. It was crying for help from inside a cage. The bearer of the cage entered Mabuka's underground. He's still down there, inside the cage. You describe the cat, you see. Big yellow eyes, pink nose. Its fur is very dark. Black as the deepest night. It's him. That's my friend, Mr. Midnight. I have to go find him. But Mabuka is asleep. Waking her up can end in disgrace. I'm not afraid of her. Well, feel free to take anything you need from my home. You are brave and I respect bravery very much. Thank you, Akula. I'm Fran, by the way. I'll see you around. I'm taking this. I can't take that. I'm taking this hairbrush. Yoink! Hairbrush to brush here. Uh, let's brush the knife. Nope, or not. What's in here? This mirror is transparent. It's more like a window. A winrer? <laughs> a window zero? The eyes are looking around. I wonder what they see if they don't have a brain. Or maybe a cooler, but she can't have be the brain because she's an eye. I actually think that this is another allegory for Fran looking into a mirror and not recognizing herself. Right, so this is kind of like the Fran that she was. And if we go back out here, this is the Fran that she is now. This is lobotomized Fran. So I think that if we like stab something into the eye, then it'll start bleeding, right? It'll start crying blood. I can't do that. There is blood in here. Door 103. Ooh, it's all bloody. Okay, that's probably not the key for it. That's probably the key for here, right? Yep. We're going down, down. Into Itward Zone. There's another key right here. A lot of things to interact with. Good grief. Okie dokie. All right, mysterious paintings in a mysterious place. It is indeed very mysterious. The eyes are crying tears of blood. That's sad. All right, mysterious painting. Okay. So this one is... Uh, these are Fran. These are just Fran. And that's what she's seeing when she looks in the mirror now. Dead skulls on the wall. I never thought of this, but I kind of like it. It's just the inside of humans. It's beautiful. I don't think that's appropriate, mouse. I'm sorry, but I need this key. There are many doors that I wish to unlock. Tell your friend to be nice and open his mouth. He won't. He never does. Besides, his teeth are reinforced. It would be hard to get the key without his permission. Reinforced teeth? I see. I'll see what I can do to get the key then. And who are you, if I may ask? I am Fran. 
Nice to meet you, Frank. I'm Roberto. Welcome to Mabuka's Den. Mabuka? Who's Mabuka? You don't know who Mabuka is? You don't? Leave now! Just leave! But, Roberto, sir, I haven't been here before. Don't judge me for not knowing. Tell me who Mabuka is instead so I know. Okay, okay. Mabuka is the mother of darkness. The darkest darkness, the obscurity, the end of light. Mabuka is the mother of all creatures from the fifth reality. What? Am I the fifth reality? I thought Raymore was king here. Ah, Raymore, the terrible black, the son of darkness. Nobody likes him too much. You should go now. I've said enough. All right. I'll be back later anyway. I must get your friend's key. Do we have the crowbar? <laughs> I know it's a little bit nuclear, but maybe we could, uh... Put the crowbar... No. Okay. What What if we blow a balloon up in his mouth? Boom. I'm not sure what to do with this. What if we examine this box right here? My school case. What's in it? Use it on Fran. I won't even try that. All right, fine. Right, so we've got Itwood's jacket right here with a note in the pocket. This is Itwood's clothing. But where is he then? Itwood, are you somewhere near? This looks like a ceremonial robe, doesn't it? I just imagined him without any clothes. I bet he's got a boner. <laughs> Key inside the little house. I already found it! All right, we've got a phone here. 911! One, one, one. Why is it giving us different key presses every time we press it? Star six nine. That's the, or hash six nine? That's supposed to be the redial feature here in New Zealand. I don't know what it would be in Sweden or wherever this game was made. It would forgot his hat. Or maybe the hat forgot its head. Maybe it's another ceremonial robe. Or maybe the hat can't exist without the head and vice versa. But it has to, because the hat's right there. That means nothing is real. Wow. So what that means at all, Fran. Oh, it's so much worse that he just pissed in the bath as well. There's a couple of things here. I think we need the soap as well. That was one of the things written on the uh, note. Does the sound of my heart disturb you? It could stop all of a sudden and that would be the end. I don't like thinking about my heartbeat. I just want the soap. Soap? Are you having trouble with your hygiene? <sighs> Yes, terrible problems with hygiene. I smell like my flesh is all rotten inside. But that sounds... <laughs> delicious. I don't think that would be a problem. Maybe for you. Let me just have the soap for a little while. All right, then. Take it. <laughs> it's yours. Right. Mmm. But be careful with the hijackers. They love children that smell like soap. They eat their baby bodies and keep the heads. Their beautiful baby faces. Sounds terrible. I'll be careful. Thank you for the soap, and I'll see you later. Or I'll see you never, if it's too soon. I turn on the water. Oh, I see. We're just wasting water. That's fine, I guess. You took my soap. Why did you take my salt? Do you have hygiene problems? What? You gave it to me, you oaf. I can't go in there. There's no floor. I could try flying, but what if I can't fly? I could die. I better not jump either. The room is quite far away. Uh, we probably have to go down the stairwell, right? Can't go in there. Right, so... I think that possibly there's another stairwell that'll lead up in there. What can we talk with this one? Hello, Mr. Skull. I have a little flesh left on you. My kitty would lick and chew that off you. Would you like to be eaten by my kitty? Fran, you absolute freak of nature. Keep your invasive thoughts to yourself. How many of these things have we got? We got the soap bar now. We still need one glove. What about this room in here? Is there anything else in here? What's, what's this? Hello, curtains. Are you hiding something from me? I can't just move the curtains. They're quite heavy. What to do? Here we go. Ah, the stairwell. Great, this is where we want to go next. So now we can shove this gigantic thing into the bath or not. 103, insert button. Yeah, we've got a button, sure. It's a weird form of payment, but legal tender is legal tender. And there goes my button. Now what? Pliers! Oh no, I know what to do with them. What about this bottle? Can I have that? Yes, the bottle is perfect. I'll take it. We probably have to fill this up at the... 
at the, at the faucet, don't we? And I'm pretty sure we're supposed to use the pliers on that skull right there. Oh, God. Oh, oh, hate that. I took a screenshot anyway, though. <laughs> Good you! I hope somebody takes out your teeth as well. Well, the tooth fairy already took my baby teeth. Insane, isn't it? Let's take this key. I'm pretty sure this is going to unlock another area, but we are going to fill up this nice little glass bottle anyway, simply because we probably need to fill it up with some kind of liquid. Great. I fill the bottle with the water. La la la. Excellent. And now what do we do? Can we take the teeth? No, of course not. I'm really sorry that I snapped your teeth open. I feel bad. I feel really bad about that. Let's use this key probably here. Yes, good. Okay, what's out here? That's Cheshire Cat. Back of the giant cat. Do we have to stick like a battery or something in there? We actually put... Seriously? This must be for something important. Soap? Yep, bottle of water. Why the hell are we doing this? What about this hairbrush? No, it won't work. Okay, what about balloons? No. This bloody knife? No. What about if we use this bloody knife on Big Cat? No, it won't work. Okay, let's talk to it. What a Big Cat? That's not helpful. Wake up clock, perfect. Uh, it's tightly tied. I want it, I'll have to do something about it. Okie dokie. Let's take this clock. Got your little wake-up clock. Let's use it on the cat. Why are we doing that? Oh, oh! I see! So, the the Ekog clock is actually this gigantic Cheshire cat. Alright, let's hit this lever. Uh, thank you, Cheshire cat. That was handy. There's a glove up here, too. Hello, tree! You're big! What are those red things coming from inside you? I think, friend, that those are pustules. I guess it won't tell. Oh, we can reach it. Nice. Excuse me, tree. I want the glove. Thank you. Okay, let's use this on Mr. Midnight's hatch. This is terrifying. Like, actually terrifying. Okay, how many of these have we got so far? We still need a working bulb, black wire, and piano keys. Don't know where the hell I would find most of those things, so they're probably in another zone. Bye, Cheshire! Oh, hello there. Oh, they're really, really uh, dangerous in the fifth reality, aren't they? Excuse me, I really need the key hanging just behind you. Excuse me, but I don't talk to strangers! You don't need to talk, just let me take the key. If I choose not to talk to strangers, not listening is also part of the deal! How disappointing. I have a question. Are you stuck to this tree? I'm firmly attached to it! Why do you ask? I'm just curious. See you later! Well, we've got this brush right here that we could probably use on it. Look, I found a magical hair comb. Isn't it great? I don't know! A hair comb? What's that? Well, it's to make your hair very pretty and smooth. Would you like to try it? I don't know! Is it dangerous? It can be very pleasant if you do it smoothly. All right, let's try it! All right, just promise you won't burn me, okay? I'd only burn if I was in danger! Be gentle and nothing bad will happen! Okay, I'll be gentle. Okay, another screenshot I took. It worked! What's happening to me? I've never experienced anything like this before! But how? You're a Lucifern. All Luciferns I've met do this all the time. Really? Well, thank you very much! It feels incredible! I feel like I need to fly away! Okay, that leaves us with the issue of how the hell do we get to that key? Must be the key for the door 103. I can smell it! But I can't reach it from here. What to do? Well, you could blow up these balloons and you could maybe float over. Yes, maybe not. Oh, I also just realized there's a pentagram down here. I hope you'll find your cat friend soon. Why well, still see him inside that cage? There's a button right here. Great. Did that wake the snail up maybe? No, it did not. What's we got? Ah, a bulb. Great. I've got the bulb now. Excellent. So, what else do we need? We need black wire and piano keys, don't we? And they seem to be like the last ones that we could potentially actually get. Oh, wait, black wire. Black wire, right here. Yoink. I might need this wire uh, very near into the future. 
And there was one other thing. Piano keys. Piano keys. Oh, I see. Piano keys. Gonna keep this little piano to play lovely melodies. Thank you. Whoops. I want to leave the dollhouse. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got everything that we need so we can go into 102 while Fran still doesn't recognize who we are. We can start dumping things into this cat's ass. Good one, and this black cable right here, too, and this light bulb. Boom! Oh my gosh! Oh, I hate that! Uh, let's take this thing. Wow, what a big cat. No, take the object, you, uh, you oaf. Okay, good. Good! Don't know what it does. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. The echo clock. It's finished! What do I do with it? Oh, do I use it on the eye? Maybe I use it on that gigantic eye. Oh, here you go, Fran. Remember this? I won't even try that. All right, fine. What about the, what about the eye? What if we use it on the eye, which was the exact same thing I just said? Uh. No, he doesn't even recognize it. He actually hates it. Is this a light switch? Oh, it is. Okay, so we didn't see this before because they were kind of camouflaged. Good to know. All right, so now that we've got this music box, I'm not entirely sure what we do with it. Do we just put it on the table right here or? It's a weapon. It says use the weapon. Can't do that. All right, I'm going down, 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 down. Let's try use this on this oaf right here, bath boy. Ah, oh, things not working, make me angry. Right, so that's not the answer. Oh, there was that tree, wasn't there? Getting eaten by the Kamalas. I've got a... I've got a, a bit of a theory. Maybe we don't blow these balloons up. Maybe they're like water balloons. If we use these on the faucet. Aha! Ah, the powerful water balloons! Okay, we'll leave that tap running because we're inconsiderate and of course we live in New Zealand uh, where we don't pay for water. We'll go back through 101 and we'll try and huck a water balloon at that Kamala eating the sad tree. I think that's got to be the way, right? This is obviously the answer. Boom! Oh goodness, I missed. Uh, okay, we still have two more. Ah, almost. It's a good third time's the charm. Oh, thank the Lord. Yes, I did it! Goodbye, Kamala. Whoa, I don't feel the sadness anymore. Thank you. Don't worry about it. I'm happy you feel better. I do feel better. Let me give you something in return. A twig. Thanks. A piece of me. You can plant it if you'd like. Ah, thank you, sir. I have to go now. I must find my cat. I hope you find it. See you around. We are going to go in here, and I'm pretty sure that we just use the stick on the key, right? That's got to be the intended way forward. And then we'll be able to open that door. All I needed was a thread. That's all I needed. I just needed a single lonely thread to, to, to kind of pick at. Here we go. Stick on the key. Yes! Okay. Fantastic. I can reach it. Now I have the key. Okay, so we've got a weapon and we've got a key. I imagine that the last and final door is going to be some sort of boss fight, isn't it? Maybe not a boss fight, but definitely something that we use on something else. It's meaty. Ooh. Ooh. Hello? Is this that, uh, Melfast? No. That's actually a demon. It was in the journal. There it was. Wait. Oh, I think the last page was supposed to be the music box as well. This, Mabuka, is the end of the light. Okay, so this is Mabuka. Let's not wake her up just yet. Uh, let's instead go around and kill all of her uh, creatures. Not sure what to do with this. Really? I'm pretty sure that's what we do with it. There's three skulls here. These look like human skulls. I wonder if they all died trying to enter Mabuka's heart. I have to be alert. You never know what can happen. These look like human skulls. Okay, those are all the same dialogue. What about down here? I have to be alert. You never Okay, same thing. Hello, goat. You look a bit like Remor. Are you a cousin to Remor, maybe? But much prettier, though. <laughs> wow. Kiss us! Hello, little boar. Are you having a lovely time? Are you a friend of Mabuka? 
What about this worm? You don't scare me one bit. Okay, are they supposed to be the, the deadly worms or something like that? You don't scare me one bit. There's this giant tree here. Little girls in Mabuka's den always die. Well, that was foreboding. Thanks. Didn't need that. Did we use this on Mabuka? Oh! Oh, God, that actually scared me. All right, she's a little bit pissed off. Uh, beware of Mabuka. The awakened darkness rises from the unknown. Oh, I'm sorry to wake you, Mother Mabuka, but I need a favor. Can somebody tell me who this creature is? Quite insulin for such a tiny body. Excuse me, but I can answer that myself. I'm Fran Bo, human girl, 11 years old, and I'm very brave, so you know. A human in Mabuka's den. That's amusing. Who brought you here? That would be Remor. I think he's your son, isn't he? Did my son manage to enter your head already? You mean like cutting my head open? I don't think so. Did you drink or eat some sort of reddish potion or beans? Why are you looking at me? Beans? My pills look like red beans, so yes, I took a whole bottle. Then I cannot use violence against you. The power has been unleashed. I hope you'll find beneath the ground the truth you seek. Thank you, but what power has been unleashed? Can you tell me? The power inside you, don't you know? You were selected by the five realms of existential existence to be the keeper of the key. The five realms of essential existence were created parallel with time. What? What are you talking about? The keeper of the key? Who told you that? The great Vlogus from Primeve told us everything a long time ago. The Keeper will be haunted by the Son of Darkness after feeding from the Red Seed! But you're too young, I must say. Too young indeed to be the Keeper of the Key. There's something about you. There's something obscure up into you. I think Remor killed my parents, Mother Mabuka. Can you imagine how that feels? Why am all of those feelings, friend Bo? Why am everything sinister? All the darkness you can imagine? Why feed from tears and sorrow? From desperation when fear! And you don't care if Remor killed my parents? I thought you were nice. Why I'm curious to know the reason, if that makes you feel better. Now I understand. It's the reason itself. The truth you're seeking. Go on, Keeper of the Key. Be brave now. I'll open my heart for you. I broke her heart. Oh, that sucks. It sucks to be her, I suppose. Can we just toss this knife down and be done with it? No, can't be done. Can we toss this knife into Mabuka's face? I'm clever enough to find another solution. What do you mean? We actually have to use an item on her? What about this? Nope. Okay. It strangely still had the instructions. Whoa! Hello? This is that abortion thing from the first chapter. All right, we've got a bunch of things to interact with. There's an eye here. They listen, they see, and they touch. In a way, I feel like I'm back in Oswald Asylum. But they can't be. Or can it? Okay. What about this thing? Oh, that creature's body is made out of baby faces. The bath boy said something about this. I think it's the hijacker. Okay. No, I know you from somewhere. You took something from me, didn't you? You little thief. Where's my knitting needle, eh? Did you stab all your little friends with it? What? A knitting needle? Are you the dead nurse I saw back in Oswald Asylum? I really looked to you, eh, you little beast? Take a number, would you? And wait for your turn in the waiting room. But, Miss Nurse, I don't need medical attention. I just want to find my kitty. Take a number and wait. I won't repeat myself. Okay. Female Edward voice. What about 106? It's locked. It doesn't have a keyhole. What if we use a crayon on it? Can we draw one? <laughs> Can we draw a keyhole? Ah, I wonder how long I have to wait now. Hours? Maybe days? I've been waiting for a week now. How long has everybody else been waiting? Oh, I've been waiting for like a month. 
but I have number two, so it must be my turn very soon. I've been waiting for three and a half weeks. Totally hopeless. Uh, excuse me, everybody, but is there a way to make things go faster? Yes, become a talk to yourself. That would be faster. And by doing that, you could also help us all. But why don't you become a doctor yourself, then? I can't, because I feel very sick. I can't. My R.I. has been blinded. I have this broken horn, you see. I can't be a doctor. I have to be a patient. Neither can I. I've lost the ability to frighten myself in front of the mirror. Well, I'm not sick at all. Please let me all go before you, okay? I can't. I don't even know what illness I have. That's why I'm here. <sighs> hmm. But how can you not know? Do you feel pain anywhere? That's a very hard question. Make it softer. How can I make a question softer? That's very strange. Oh, have you tried pulling your eyes off? It helps sometimes. Ah, enough! It's impossible to talk sense with any of you. Of course you can't make sense of us. You're not the one who sees it all. You've only known us for a few minutes. There's really little time to understand it all. Hmm. That's true, but would it be nice to use some, some common sense? Why? What does common sense do that uncommon sense doesn't? Well, it helps to better understand each other. We understand each other very well, with our uncommon sense anyway. Yes, we actually do. We do respect the differences. Hmm, but who is the one that sees it all then? You mean Mabuka? No, oh, Mabuka knows everything. It's not the same as seeing everything. No, I want to wait, because talking won't make waiting go faster. All right, thanks for nothing. Ah, waiting was fun at the beginning, now it's just boring! Wait! Okay. I think my horn won't grow again. I'm going to be very angry because of that very soon. Do you see the screen? I have number two, it's almost my turn. My R.I. is broken. The big eye told me that because she says it all. So the big eye, I think, is a stand-in for the grey-haired nurse who kind of oversees the entire... What if she's actually the antagonist of the entire game, the grey-haired nurse? What if she's the one who's actually drugging the children with the uh, experimental drugs? And maybe she's supplying all of these fresh bodies for Dr. Roswald to kind of fiddle with, with this demonic... whatever the hell he's doing. This must be the number display. Ah, I'm number seven. It'll take ages to get there. I must get a better number, like number two. Okay, what if we just draw... We don't have a number, actually. Right, so we've got to get a number. Ah, that's probably what this does. What? We didn't have a ticket and we knew it was seven. Oh, this is all in our head. All right, let's draw on this. No. Let's cut it up. No. Let's draw on it. No. Okay. What if we trade this ticket for everybody else's? Hey, buddy. Would it be possible to exchange our tickets? I have number seven. I'd like to help you, but it's my turn to help myself, so no. Right. What about this demon? Would it be possible to exchange our tickets? I have number seven. Oh, that's not very convenient for me. I'm sorry, but no. What about the right eye guy? This guy here. Not really, no. I'm not interested. Okay. Dead. What about this guy? You see the screen? I have number two. It's almost my turn. Exchange our tickets? Would it be possible? No, I need to know if I'm in pain. I need to know what illnesses I have. What if I find out what illnesses you have? Would you give me your ticket then? Sure, if I'm still here when you come back. Uh, oh, 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 painting! Painting with lore! Look at that! Lore! Sometimes things just don't work. I actually recognize that this is H-A-N-D in a Thurstonese language right here, which is, honestly, it just goes to show how long I've spent decoding crap in this game. Uh, let's give it to the nurse, and maybe she'll give us a better one. I'm not sure what to do with this. Uh, what if we give it to the lady who clearly is pro-choice? This won't work. Okay, then! Richard from above, get out of Mabuka's den. You're not welcome. Excuse me, but I'm looking for my cat, and I need to wake up Mabuka. Just Mabuka? Mother Mabuka, you arrogant little infant. How did you plan to wake her up, huh? With the crazy ideas of Cogwind? Well, Gwynn is a nice clockmaker. He's not crazy. Ah, so you know him. I assume you've been to a thirster. Horrid place, I say. Too dazzling. Well, that's exactly where I want to go after I find my kitty. Good for you. Your fragile little mind will be safe there with all of those boring creatures. I'm going now, you wicked tree. My kitty is waiting for me. Uh, let's try and stab this tree in the face. No, it doesn't work. Okay. So... Let me go back to the eye. Show him the ticket. I might know what to do. Yeah? Tell me about this! 
please? Hello? Excuse me, I need your help. Well, of course you do. What can I do for you? Can you tell me what illness the creature who is the ticket number two suffers? He's in the waiting room. Waiting. Mm, let me see. I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's depression. I see him, but from what I see, it's not really an illness. It's just a headache caused by low levels of agony. Sounds like depression. Wow, but is it possible to help him somehow? I need his ticket. Yes, crying all the tears you can cry until you fill this bottle. We'll do it! But don't forget the tears must be caused by real sorrow. That won't be a problem. I'm at a very problematic point in my life. Oh, I thought everything was going to be better when Kitty and I got home. But now everything is so confusing. Aunt Grace is totally crazy. Talking to her was horrible. I really trusted her. I don't know what to do now. Babuka said that I was selected for something. But she fell asleep again and won't answer my questions. I need my kitty. Mr. Midnight's hugs are the biggest comfort in my life. I just want to find him so we can go back to a thirster and be happy. Mmm. Lovely pain. So profound. I don't know if I like this. <laughs> I don't know. The bottle is now full of your tears. Give it to the critter that has your ticket. Right. Go now. Time doesn't wait for anybody. Thank you. I'll be going now. Goodbye. Oh, me. That was intense. So we should have to give it to this dickhead here, right? Uh, the here. The flask of tears. Here you go, buddy old pal. Take this. Drink this. You'll feel much better. Oh, trying to poison me. <laughs> oh, lovely. Let's see. It tastes like the most profound and darkest elixir I've ever tasted. Give me more. Give me more. No, leave me alone. You promised to give me the ticket if I helped you. All right, all right. There you go. Nice. And thank you. Your tears taste absolutely delicious. Oh, that's unlucky. Literally the second that he leaves, we get his ticket. All right, great. So, we use it on the nurse, maybe? Hello, patient number two. We're going to do all we can to save you. Do you have an appointment? Well, not really. You told me to take a number and wait. I'm sorry, we don't help sick people without an appointment. I'm not sick. I lost my kitty and I just want to find him. I lost kitty? Don't worry, that's a natural reaction to your sickness. You're just lucky, though. Many lose their minds instead. Yeah, oh, lucky. But how do I get an appointment, then? Oh, just call me. Here's my card with the telephone number. Are you insane? Call us! I imagine this is the symbol for the Oswald Institute. There's like a, a happy face, and there's two arms up in the air like, woo! And there's also two legs attached to uh, uh, just below the elbow here, which kind of represents Oswald stitching patients into the wrong um, order of body parts. But why must I call you? Why can't you just make an appointment now? Oh, that would be silly, because now I'm waiting for you to call me. Oh, all right. I'll make the call then. This is real Alice in Wonderland kind of logic. That book, by the way, that book was very controversial when it came out because it had zero point. It had literally no message. Oh, one. Two, two, one, two, one, seven, two, seven, uh, six. Oh, hello. Yes, you told me to call to make an appointment. Uh, it's Franbo. Yeah, I'm available now. No, no. Uh, yes, I do have a pair of eyes. Really? Okay. I'll see you in a minute, but then. Great. Great, thank you. Yeah, bye. Yes. Yes, bye. Wow, she was talkative. Jesus Christ. Lady, get some friends! Hi again. Hello, patient number two. Do you have an appointment? Yes, Fran Bell is my name and the appointment is now. Let me check the archives. Yes, there you are. The doctor will see you in a minute. Just go through the door to your right. Uh, thank you. I think I'd love to. Ah! I'm sorry, did, did I scare you? You look quite pallid. Is that a Kamala? Oh, yes, yes, what a nightmare. You look like a healthy human. Oh, thank you, I guess. Now, if you don't mind, I have an appointment. I don't mind, actually, because it's none of my business. Is this the therapist? Oh, no, it's Beth Mid again. You haven't chosen to end your life yet. Isn't the pain you feel enough? You're Raymore, aren't you? Why well, haven't had the chance to introduce myself properly? Sadly, why cannot be seen in the third reality for long periods of time? 
I am Remor, the terrible black, the prince of Yignis. I know who you are. Don't try to act like nothing happened. Did you kill my parents? Where is my cat? What did you do to Dr. Dean? I immensely enjoy seeing your suffering dripping from your eyes. What is it from me? You are the manifestation of my desires. I can use you for whatever I want. You are under my power. This is definitely the doctor, by the way. This is, I can guarantee you that this dickhead right here is the doctor that's experimenting on all of these people. That's not true. Not anymore. I won't allow you to trick me anymore. Tell me, why did you kill my parents? Why? You're assuming that it was I who did such a terrible thing. I saw you that night outside my window. It must be you who did it. You trust your eyes way too much. Whether you learned that human receptors are weak, your body is fragile, easy to corrupt. theory as well wasn't it i cannot believe that i actually cannot believe that i called it using an intro scene oh that is nuts that is so nuts <laughs> i shouldn't be so happy about what i'm seeing but i'm so happy no it can't be stop it i didn't do it i didn't it wasn't me stop it please Oh, here we go. Who was it, my darling? Who killed your parents? The dumb little brother must suffer and die before coming this day. Damn, that is sobering. I got over all of the endorphins of being correct about this theory, and I just realized that being correct about the theory is actually the worst possible outcome. No, second worst possible outcome. Could have been the Jewish family theory that I had, which I'm actually very happy to say was not the case. That monster wants to trip me. I know it. Everybody is crazy around here. I have to find Kitty and Lee. We're all mad here, Fran. We're all a little mad here. Why does the brain have two sides? So it looks like an ass. The brain has many different parts. It's like a delicate machine. Yeah. The spine? All humans have that in common. I can always start a conversation like, Hello, we both have a spine, isn't that awesome? Oh, I wish I could say that to everybody I met, but I can't! I can't say that to everybody I know. Yeah, you would look so funny without skin. Ah, oh, okay. Ah! There's a cat, which I'm still certain doesn't exist. The doctor is uh, wired up to <laughs> to old Shocky. I think that was the name of the first one. There's also a syringe here that we could probably take. Yep, syringe. It has red fluid inside. What could it be? I think we're supposed to inject the doctor with this, right? Uh, X-rays. This must be Dr. Dern's head. Pretty empty. You're all right, Dr. Dern. No craziness. Uh, what about this one? Somebody must really be fond of brains and heads. Ah, Oswald. This guy right here. This is who uh, Beth met is. The old man again, Dr. Oswald. Okay. Uh, what are these? What are these? These buttons don't do anything. What does this lever do? Ouch! Electric shock! I think I'll just leave it there. These buttons don't do anything. Oh! How many times can we... Oh! We electrocuted the doctor three times. So this isn't old shocky. This is actually a uh, an actual... Like, uh, uh, shock therapy, no, something sh therapy, it's a, it's a shock therapy, it's a, a let, electroshock therapy, it's electroshock therapy, it's supposed to numb the neurodes of the brain so that the neurodes fire off less, which can help really noisy minds, but, uh, doesn't really last permanently. Can we talk to him? Dr. Jen, are you alright, sir? Sir, wake up, please. 
Dr. Dion, wake up. Are you alive, sir? Ah, what should I do to wake him up? Okay, that, uh, that's not what we do. What about the cat? Kitty, my darling, I'm here for you. Are you all right? Kitty, answer me. What's wrong with you? Meow. Meow. Why won't you talk to me, Mr. Midnight? Please don't do this to me. <coughs> talk to me, Mr. Midnight. This isn't funny. This place. This is place, isn't it? You must get out of here so you can talk to me again. I'll take you to a thirst, my darling. Palantras can help us. I promise you, nothing will tear us apart again. Oh, kitty. I'll be right back. I must help Dr. Den, all right? He seems to be in trouble. All right, let's stab him full of this red fluid so that he can see this reality. Maybe this will wake him up. Boom! Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's really bad, actually. Ah, oh, damn! What was that? Don't worry, Dr. Dion, it's me, Fran. Uh, what? I can't see very well. Fran Bow, sir, from the Oswald Asylum. We were there at the cemetery, remember? Fran, what happened? Why am I tied to a chair? What have you done? I'm trying to help you, sir. The big monster brought you here. We must go. Come on, Fran. Monsters? I don't feel like playing games. All right, it wasn't a monster at all. Just let me help you. That's Oswald! But what is she doing here? I thought you chained her up. Is this Grace? Ah, oh, I did. I told you she was a hard one to tame. You want me to get rid of her? Get rid of me? Aunt Grace, why are you talking like that? Who is this old man? Oh, lovely. You sound just like your mother when she was young. My mother? Do you know her? Who are you? I'm Dr. Oswald Harrison. I know everything about you, Fran. Oswald from Oswald Asylum? Yes, Fran. The same old man. But what do you know about my mother and my aunt? Well, many years ago, I was studying the magnificent complexity of twin siblings. Lucy and Grace were part of my study. Both helped me find the key to success. The key? Hmm. Did you know that my mother and father were murdered? Yes, of course. Remo did a great job. His power of manipulation is extraordinary. What I don't understand is how you can be so calm about it. It was you holding that knife after all. I'm not calm, sir. I knew it was Remor all the time, but why is he hunting me? Remor is the manifestation of your weakness. A blind and powerful minister station of your fears, sweet Jesus, my left arm. But why would the monster kill my parents? Because your parents were interfering with my work. Yes! Yes! Another theory nailed. Dad was investigating with the doctor, so the cult had him killed. Woohoo! But I actually did you a favor. You are suffering, and pain is connected to growth and strength, Fran. Oswald, please, let's just do what we need to do. Aunt Grace, please don't be mad at me. We're family. Let us go. My kitty and I can find a place to go without bothering you. Please, just, just let us go. Yes, you're right, Fran. I'm sorry for being so hard on you. Come on, let's go now. Ah, good. He's gone. I'm clever enough to find another solution. <laughs> Seriously? That's a pretty damn good solution. What do you think about that, you old bastard? Go with your aunt, Fran. Isn't that what you want? Well, not particularly, no. <laughs> no, it's not what I want. Don't you dare. Fran, my dear, listen to me. You must know Dr. Oswald only wants what's best for you. When Lucy was pregnant with you, he knew you'd be a very special girl. He told us to take great care of you, but your mother betrayed us. She wanted to hide you from us. Ah, oh, another one I called, yes. We thought she wanted to kill you, but that's not true. Dr. Oswald really wants to give you the best. But for that, you must allow him to try a little experiment on you. And then everything will be fine? Of course, but there's still one thing we must take care of. This little treasure must go. <coughs> Mr. Midnight! He's gone. He's so gone. No! No! Kitty! Come on, friend. Stop weeping. The cat is dead now. 
you as my friend. You killed my best friend. You also helped kill my parents, didn't you? Didn't you? How can you live with yourself? I hate you. Ah! I hate you. <laughs> knife, knife, inventory, knife. Stop it, run, help, help. Who's gonna help you here? Please help. Yeah, go on, Oswald. Stop me, I dare you. Oh, that's a gun. Don't you dare touch Grace, you little monster! Oh my goodness, she's totally insane! Bring her to me! I'll do the experiment while she's still warm. I need to extract the brain right away. Fran, are you alright? What have you done to her? She tried to kill me. You're right about Fran, Dr. Dan. She was sick. But she's bleeding. Let me take care of her. No, you won't. She's mine now. I've been waiting for this moment for many years. Looking for the right child, the right brain. Now that I have her, nothing can stop me. <laughs> oh, he is different. <laughs> he is a different creature. Okay, I was wrong about one thing. Oh, Fran, everything will be fine. Who... who are you? I'm Midwer, the one many children talk about. But... but you're not human. Ecto Pro, Ecto Pro Te, Palantris Monica East. Gorska, Edward, I found him! Oh my goodness, stay away from the girl, leave her alone. Little Fran must be cured! You think you can use the same body? Yeah, she's not completely gone yet. Here I go! Oh, Mother Mabuka! You took the child's innocence! Fran is now dead and alive! Wake up in darkness, Fran! You'll be able to walk towards the light, you fucking c Creepy. I was too busy laughing at my own joke. Uh, what happened? It went Palantris? My heart hurts. Mr. Midnight, how? You're alive, my kitty. I missed you so much. Please tell me something. Ren, we must go now. Go? All right. Dr. Dern, look! This is Edward and Palantris! I told you about them, remember? I told you they were real. See? Do you believe me now? <laughs> he can't hear you. I think he's under the power of my book now. We really must leave now. But can he come with us, please? He's been really nice to me. He really wanted to protect me and help me. We can't bring him back with us, I'm sorry! That sorry sounded weird, but also I've never heard an Australian apologize for a thing in their life. But what we can do is make him believe that all of this was a dream. He'll wake up and think none of this really happened. But he won't remember you, Fran. I see, well, that's okay, I guess, as long as he's safe. That's very kind. You're finally seeing beyond your own desires. You are becoming one with everything. Your parents would be very proud of you. You really think so? Thank you, Blantris. Now let's send Dr. Dearn home. Marcel Dearn, Oanum Vecma Sudensla Ecto. Goodbye, Dr. Dearn. Let's go now, friend. There's so much you must see and learn. Uh, that sounds like fun. Let's go, kitty. The end! Finish Fran Bo! I still don't know many things. But one thing I do know. That between guilt and fear, I choose happiness. This has got to be the afterlife, right? This. Th
It's pretty clear that when Kill Monday Games also made Little Misfortune uh, two years after Fran Bo released on Steam, I feel like they were trying to just kind of drive home that all of the ideas that they kind of touched on, which I'm pretty sure were initially intended to be an acid trip, just by a crazy person on the brink of death having just experienced some kind of life-threatening surgery. I feel like Little Misfortune was trying to drive home specifically that yes, this happened, and yes, this happens. So I feel like they're definitely trying to get the ultra-reality thing as, as a canon thing rather than actually being a weird kind of a creation by a by a sick person. We killed our family. Apparently we were possessed by a demon. I think that is an allegory for mental health. I think that we were uh, some kind of psychopath. I think we killed our own cat. I think we killed our parents. I don't think the demon that was inside of us was actually a demon. I think that was just a, an allegory for the mental illness that we were feeling, which mm, I don't want to say schizophrenia. I'm leaning in towards psychopathy, specifically because psychopaths 50-50 have a chance of having delusions of grandeur, delusions of persecution. And schizophrenics tend to not think uh, with clarity, right? There's there's no, like, straight line when they think. And I know you could look at the game and, and say, hey, there was no straight line for the story of that game. But it did have consistency. It wasn't just uh, acidic spirals and hearing TV static and stuff like that. It, it was an experience. And schizophrenia does not really give experiences. They just kind of give distractions from all of the things that could potentially be experiences, living or uh, just made up in your head. So I'm I'm thinking that Fran was a psychopath. I nailed it. Grace definitely had a hand in killing our parents. I think I nailed that right from the start, but I don't think I specifically stated why. I think when I was talking about Grace, I think I said that she was just a, a kind of an unfit parent, right? She didn't have any kids. She didn't want any kids. She could have possibly worked at that asylum, which could also possibly be how she sourced us for Mr. For, for Oswald there. And since all of the fictional characters came into play literally as we were shot and sent unconscious, I think that was the anesthetic being put into us um, and we were just kind of remembering being lobotomized. I still think that this whole game takes place from a severed portion of the brain, right? I, I definitely think that. What else? It would, I'm not entirely sure existed the cat. I'm not entirely sure existed. We were probably just projecting our own feelings onto the cat. Pelotris, still no idea. Absolutely no idea. So there could actually be the potential for the lead up to Little Misfortune and there actually being demons that just inhabit our world from other existences. That could actually be a possibility, but I, I think that it would be misleading. Honestly, I think the intent of this game was just to show you kind of an interpretation of the mental health struggle of a child that underwent a significant portion of trauma, be it imposed on herself or imposed by some kind of otherworldly force, right? But because if you say that it's an otherworldly force, that would by definition be a delusion of grandeur. <laughs> so it doesn't really leave us at a great place. The fifth dimension could potentially be the afterlife, or it could be the section of the brain actually getting cut off in the first place. But with Little Misfortune as well as context, and if you haven't seen that, you'll find that right up here in a minute, um, it could also potentially be that the fifth dimension is trying to squash down on what I would consider to be dimensional parasites. Or demons, essentially, as Kill Monday games have, have kind of shown them to be. But I still think that both games didn't actually happen. I, I think that the and the protagonists of both games, Little Misfortune and Franbo, were both unreliable narrators, and I think that what we saw was them kind of experiencing their surroundings in the state that they were in at the time. If you have any other theories, then please go down into the comments below and let me know. I still don't know about the Prime Eve. I know that in Little Misfortune we had Benjamin who held the Prime Eve, which was kind of some kind of magical crystal which he used in a very, very, almost um, cringe and cheesy way to defeat the antagonist of Little Misfortune. But aside from the journal of Leon, we don't even know that that happened. We could have read the journal of Leon. He could have been a previous resident of the asylum and we could have just literally imagined everything that he wrote in there. We could have just put ourselves through that because our brain wasn't really doing anything 
more productive than just that. We are just sitting in our room, fiddling around as a child, and we are kind of living out the remainder of our life in this fantasy world. That, that, is, that is my interpretation of both games. Little Misfortune, a little bit harder to justify it being a mental health related game because we died right at the start. But there was a parasitic infestation from another dimension and Frambo also had the same things. I think Frambo also definitely had a lot more inspiration from Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass. I absolutely, 100% wholeheartedly think that this game was entirely reminiscent of that. And the point of Alice in Wonderland was that there was no point. It was just literature for the sake of uh, entertainment. You weren't really supposed to read into it too much as intended by the author, Lewis Carroll, but people did. And I feel like people would read into this one heaps where I still think that the, the story is, is no different from we killed our parents because they were investigating a demonic cult. Uh, the demonic cult had us uh, committed to the insane asylum where they did the testing with the duo team on us. And while we were there, we got lobotomized that so we didn't exhibit any psychopathic tendencies and the duo team was just to be a test on us as a, either a placebo or a replacement of some sort, probably to combat PTSD from the returning soldiers in 1945 as the game took place in 1944. Other than that, I can't be certain that any of it actually happened, right? And there was also there was also the scientific testing on on people that a lot of people would also consider body horror. So aside from those things, I can't say with absolute certainty that they actually happened, but I can definitely say that we experienced them as Fran Bo, and Fran Bo could potentially be just the conduit for this entire story. Without her, none of that would have happened. I believe that wholeheartedly and hey technically future Jensen here I've already beaten the game and I've already said my piece but there was one achievement that I missed and it's right in here apparently behind this door right here so if we can close this I will do so why is there no option to oh here we go ah the old story center of brain research and pineal gland phenomena the hell is that Christine Fontaine, Clara and Mia Bohelmet, Gladys Hannah, that is the nurse, Grace and Lucia Dagenhart, oh, so our mother worked here. Dr. Leon Castillo, that's probably him, and Dr. Oswald Harrison. Okay, so the, oh my god, there's a pentagram inside of here as well. So they were actually a cult doing research on people to try and summon demons. But all they summoned, in my opinion, was mental health disorders. Crazy. Center for Brain Research. Grace and Lucia Dagenhart. That's my mommy and aunt. Isn't that the old nurse? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, so these two children in the middle here are supposed to be a mother and aunt, and I can't really tell which one is which, necessarily. But if they were already researching this before our parents had us, then these guys would have had to have done something to summon the demon for us to kill our parents. Possibly we didn't kill our parents. Possibly... We were gaslit into thinking that we killed our parents because this group of people have been kind of like doing demonic experiments inside of uh, this mental asylum right here. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the full and completed playlist for Fran Bo, and right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you really enjoy. Just over there is going to be with my subscribe button. Why don't you click it on your way down into the description of this video where you'll find a link to my Discord where you can chat with me and my community personally. And again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next series that I make. Goodbye!